Hello, my dear grade 11 students. In this lecture video, we are going to talk about chemical equilibrium. For our objectives, first, explain chemical equilibrium in terms of the reaction rates of the forward and the reverse reaction. Second, calculate equilibrium constant and the pressure or concentration of reactants or products in an equilibrium mixture. And finally, state the least Chatelier's principle and apply it qualitatively to describe the effects of pressure, concentration, and temperature at system at equilibrium. Okay, so what do you mean by chemical equilibrium? Okay, so this is, uh, it states that the forward and the reverse reaction balance each other because they take place at equal rates. So the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Also, chemical equilibrium is a state in a chemical reaction wherein the concentration of the reactants and the product remain constant. So they do not change the concentration of reactants and product. So it's also called dynamic equilibrium. Okay. So how do we express the balance between reactants and products at equilibrium? Okay, so to express balance between reactants and products, we are going to use of equilibrium expressions. Okay, so what do you mean by equilibrium expressions? So this is simply uh, this is actually proposed by Goldberg and YH. So it states that at a given temperature, a chemical system might reach a state in which a particular ratio of reactant and product concentration has a constant value. And to represent chemical equilibrium, so we in this uh, representation, a and B represents the reactant, and C and D represents the product. And the small letter here will represent the coefficient in a balance equation. Okay, but how do we write that equilibrium constant expression? So when we say equilibrium constant expression, so this is the numerical value of the ratio of product concentration to the reactant concentration with each concentration raised to the power equal to its coefficient in the balance equation. So take note of this. Again, equilibrium constant is represented by KEQ, the ratio of the product concentration to the reactant. And take note of the coefficient use will represent as the power. So if you are to represent or write the equilibrium constant expression, it will appear this way. So KEQ is equals to take note C and D represents the products and here this is the coefficient for the product and then A and B stands for the reactant and A and B here the small letter will represent as the coefficient in the balance equation. Okay. And for computing for the equilibrium constant take note of if the value of the KEQ is greater than 1 so, products are favored at equilibrium. And if the value is less than 1, reactants are favored at equilibrium. And how do we write expression for homogeneous equilibria? So, what do you mean by homogeneous equilibria? Okay. So, homogeneous equilibria means that all reactants and products are in the same physical state. Say, for example, if we have hydrogen reacts with oxygen, it produces hydrogen iodide 2 moles. So you notice here that the reactants or products are in the same physical state gases. And how do we write? Using the equilibrium constant expression. So it's the ratio of the product and the reactant. So we have hydrogen iodide raised to the second power, and then we have hydrogen and iodine. Okay, another example for ammonia, 
okay, for ammonia. So here, the products and reactant, reactants and product is in the same physical state. So in writing, we have first the product, the ammonia, and then we have nitrogen and hydrogen. Hydrogen is raised to the third power. Okay, so take note of that for homogeneous equilibrium. Other examples, say we have this one, this equation. So here, all these equations are examples of homogeneous equilibria. So we have product first over the reactant. So this is how to write the equilibrium constant expression for the first equation. Okay, for the second one, we have hydrogen and sulfur in the numerator, and then we have hydrogen sulfide raised to the second power as the denominator. And the last one will be methane and water, and then over carbon monoxide and hydrogen raised to the third power. Okay, so again, this is for homogeneous equilibria. What about for heterogeneous equilibria? Okay, so when you say heterogeneous equilibria, here the reactants and products are present in more than one physical state. Okay, so how are we going to write the equilibrium constant expression? So here, solids and liquids will not appear anymore in the expression. Why? Because the concentration of solids and liquids are constant. So it will not be part of the equilibrium expression. Okay? For example, we have methanol in liquid and methanol in gas. So since liquid will not appear in the reaction, how are we going to write the equilibrium constant expression? Okay, so this is the expression. So we only include the gaseous phase. Okay, same as with iodine in solid form and iodine in gas when it sublimes. So here you have the uh, gaseous state. So this will be disregarded. So in writing the expression, we'll have iodine only in gaseous state. Okay, and then we also have for calcium carbonate yielding carb calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So only carbon dioxide gas will be part of the expression. And this is how to write it. Okay, and for the last example, we have here for um, product, we only include hydrogen in gaseous state and reactant, we have water raised to the fourth power. So this will be its equilibrium constant expression. Okay, so these are the other examples for heterogeneous equilibria. So in the first equation, we only have carbon dioxide and water. For the second one, we have carbon monoxide and hydrogen as the react uh, product and water only in the reactant. And for the last example, we have carbon dioxide in the product and we only include carbon monoxide in the reactant. So again, for heterogeneous, take note, liquids and solids will not appear in the equilibrium constant expression. Okay, but how are we going to compute that equilibrium constant? How do we get the value of that KAQ? So after learning that after learning how to write the equilibrium constant expression we are now going to calculate the equilibrium constant for us to determine if the equilibrium will favor the product or will favor the reactant at equilibrium okay so example in the a reaction for the formation of ammonia given the concentration of ammonia hydrogen and nitrogen Okay, so calculate the KEQ. So you first translate this into expression, which is ammonia raised to the second power over nitrogen and then hydrogen raised to the third power. And then substitute here all the values and compute for the KEQ. Okay, so what do you think is the value of the KEQ? Okay, so it's 0 0.399. So here, the value is less than 1, meaning to say in this equation, it will favor the reactant at equilibrium. Okay? Another example is for dinitrogen tetroxide and uh, uh, 2 moles of nitrogen dioxide. So given the concentration of the reactant and product, compute for the KEQ. So we have product over reactant. And what do you think is the value of the KEQ here? Okay, so it's 0 0.24. So in this um, 
chemical equilibrium, it will favor also the reactant at equilibrium because this is less than 1. Okay, so we have uh, the second example. So for uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen, it will yield methane and water. So these are the uh, concentration in mole per liter of the reactants and products. So compute for the KEQ. So it's the product over reactant. And what is the value of the KEQ here? Okay, so this is 3.93. So you see it's greater than 1, therefore it will favor the product at equilibrium. Okay? And finally, for phosphorus pentachloride yielding phosphorus trichloride and chlorine, given the concentration of each um, reactant and product, let's find the KEQ. Okay, and the value is 2.24. So here it will also favor the formation of product at equilibrium. So again, that's how to compute for the KEQ. And how will the KEQ help determine the concentration of the unknown, whether it is a reactant or a product? No? So how do we calculate equilibrium concentration? So for this example, in the equation for the formation of methane, which is presented a while ago, and uh, given the concentration of reactant and product, with the exception of methane, here in the problem, the KEQ is already given, which is 3.933 at 1,200 Kelvin. So this is the value that uh, we got a while ago in this chemical reaction. So, what is the concentration of methane, the molar or mole per liter, if the constant, the equilibrium constant is 3.933? So, first you have to translate this in an equation, and this is how it will appear. So, product first over reactant, and from here, what are you going to do? Okay, you derive the formula for methane from this equation, so methane can be computed by multiplying the KEQ, and then we have the product of the carbon, monoxide, and hydrogen raised to the third power over the concentration for water. Okay, so you compute for the value of the concentration for methane. Okay, methane gas is 27.7 molar. Okay, so the unknown here the concentration is 27.7, okay? So, for another example, at a temperature of 1,405 Kelvin, for the reaction of the decomposition of hydrogen sulfide to produce hydrogen and sulfur, here, the KEQ is already known, 2.27 times 10 to the negative 3. And the concentration for hydrogen sulfide is given and also for sulfur. So we are asked to find the concentration of the hydrogen gas. So translate this first into equilibrium expression. So we have product over reactant hydrogen and then sulfur over the hydrogen sulfide raised to the second power. And from here, you derive the formula of the unknown, which is the uh, hydrogen gas concentration. Okay, so the concentration of hydrogen gas is taken by multiplying the equilibrium constant. Then we have the sulfur, hydrogen sulfide raised to the second power over the sulfur. And what do you think is the concentration of hydrogen here? Okay, so the concentration is 0 0.0377 mole per liter. Okay, so any questions? Okay, so this ends our discussion on chemical equilibrium. Hope to see you in our next uh, lecture video. I hope you learned something. Okay, bye-bye.